understand that Alderman Michael Scott is present and we invite him to uh, address us. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, good morning, Superintendent Kelly, uh, President LaVale and Board of Commissioners. Um, really appreciate this time to speak. Uh, and I am speaking about Douglas Park, which has been an effort for me for, I would say, the last 20 years. If uh, any of you know my history with the park district, uh, I was a park supervisor at Douglas Park 20 years ago. And I, I learned, well, I thought because I lived in and around the Douglas Park area that Douglas Park was named after Frederick Douglass. Uh, and to my surprise as a supervisor, I found out that it was named after Stephen Douglas. Uh, and, you know, as a supervisor and as a, a young person, uh, not knowing how and when to maneuver around this issue, uh, it was very difficult trying to figure out what, what I needed to do. And, and so uh, my efforts kind of grounded to a halt. Um, but about four years ago, a group of smart, persistent, and socially conscious young people from Village Leadership Academy came to my office and wanted to rename Douglas Park, Stephen Douglas Park, after Rakia Boyd, uh, who is a, a slain young lady in the North Lawndale community. Mm -hmm. I thought that that would be a really heavy lift. Uh, and so I, I pitched to them the idea of renaming it after Frederick Douglass. Uh, these young people, to their credit, took this idea and they ran with it. Uh, they came to the board, uh, had a conversation with, with you. And uh, I, I could tell from the conversation that this was something that you were interested in, but I don't think we knew kind of how to get to where we were. Uh, but we asked them to do a, a lot of things, to jump through a lot of hoops and hurdles. Uh, and to their credit, they did everything that uh, the park asked, that my community asked, that my office asked, and, and I think got us to where we are here today. Uh, and so I, I want to publicly thank them for their commitment. I want to publicly thank them for uh, their persistence uh, and I, I want to thank them for uh, not giving up. A lot of times when, when we get into a, a political process or bureauc bureaucracy, uh, it is oftentimes we give up because we don't get the result w w that we want when we want it. Uh, and they did not uh, relent. And so I, I appreciate uh, them continuing the push and the effort for this. Uh, I also would like to thank... Um, the, the Lightfoot administration, because at the end of the day, uh, if, if they did not see the, the, if they didn't see that this was something that was necessary, it would not have gotten done. Uh, I want to also thank uh, Superintendent Kelly, uh, President Lavelle, and all the commissioners for getting us to this point. Uh, and so when, when we think about when history is going to be rewritten, um, I, I'm glad to say that I will, and everybody that is on that board will be on uh, the, the better side of history, um, unlike the, the former namesake of the beautiful Douglas Park. And so again, I, I thank everybody who has, has been a part of this, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak, and, and thank you for moving the ball forward. I know this has been a very unprecedented decision, and it is going to open up a can of worms for th this body that I'm sure you guys are ready uh, to step forward and, and um, make the right decisions on behalf of the residents of the city of Chicago. And thank you for this. My community thanks you. And I'm sure the young people at Village Leadership Academy thanks you as well. Thank you very much, Alderman. Uh, let me address the whole issue of the, the broader set of concerns about the names of parks and public spaces. Uh, as you may know or you may recall, uh, Mayor Lightfoot has set up an advisory committee that is going to examine this issue uh, on a, a macro level, if you will. You know, So the names going forward of parks and uh, public spaces, libraries, all of these facilities will be looked at by this committee. So we are tackling this and uh, going forward from here, uh, it will be looked at in a, a more broad sense. Well, well President, I, and I, I, I appreciate the mayor for that. At the end of the day, um, you know, whether there is a, a, a committee, uh, this body still has to vote on it. And people are still going to come and place that responsibility at your feet, even though it has been made by somebody else. And I do appreciate 
uh, the hard work, especially for a board uh, that is non-paid uh, and is just doing the good work of service for the good people of the city of Chicago. And so again, I thank you for um, for your efforts. I thank you for continuing to work with myself, with my community, uh, with the people in and around Douglas Park and with those young people of Village Leadership Academy. Uh, it, it is not forgotten by my community. And, and again, I want to thank you and all the members of the board and, and, and the superintendent as well. Well, thank you so much, Alderman. We really do appreciate you and we appreciate the, the young people who have uh, brought this issue to our attention. Thank you, Alderman. All right. Thank you, guys. You enjoy your board meeting. Thank you. Bye-bye. Before we get going with the rest of business at hand, I have a few announcements. Okay, we let we lost you. Are you, um, President Laval? You still with us? President Laval, did we lose her? Give me one moment to get her back. There she is. One moment, please, everyone. Please stand by. Jimmy should be warming up in the bullpen. <laughs> okay, let me just grab her real quick. So give me one second. If we can get her this way, um, I know we're uh, we're getting her uh, some few issues. I'm like Hamilton. I don't want to throw away my shot. <laughs> One more time. Hi, this is Avis LaBelle, and I'm not able to come to the phone right now, but I'll be happy to call you back at my earliest convenience. Okay. Please leave your name, date, and time of your call, and I'll call you as soon as I can. Thank you. All right. So at the tone, please record your message. When you finish recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Okay. Okay, so... Um, All right, so what I'm going to do while they get her going is I'm going to go ahead and go through some of the uh, the announcements that we have so far. Um, so uh, before we get going with the rest of the business at hand, I have a few announcements. Um, I want to first announce that this year's budget forum will be held virtually via the platform. Are we back? There we go, yay! <laughs> So I'm just finishing up the first part. Um, I want to announce that this year's budget form will be held virtually via the same platform on September 22nd, 2020 at 6 p.m. The notice and agenda for the forum will be released tomorrow, Thursday, September 10th. Please pay special attention to the speaker request instructions. Additionally, those wishing to submit comments in writing may do so by going to www.chicagoparkdistrict.com hyphen, I'm sorry, backslash rather, annual hyphen budget hyphen process. Let me say that one more time. This is a little confusing. www.chicagoparkdistrict.com backslash annual hyphen budget hyphen process. This link will also be live tomorrow. Thank you, Cantrice. Uh, next, we'd also take, like to take this opportunity to remind you that it is not too late to make yourself count in the 2020 census. In light of the COVID-19 outbreak, the U.S. Census Bureau has adjusted its operations to protect the health and safety of census employees, the American public, and to also ensure a complete and accurate count of all communities. The revised deadline for responding online, over the phone, or by mail to the U.S. Census is September 30th, 2020. We encourage you to respond online today at 2020census.gov. Please make yourself count. Now, first on the agenda under general business is the filing of tax abatements with Cook and DuPage County clerks. This will be marked as received and filed by the secretary. 
Also under general business, filing of the bond orders for the series 2020 A, B, C, D, E bonds. This will also be marked as received and filed by the secretary. After that comes approval of the meeting minutes from the public hearing and the annual meeting held August 12th, 2020. Is there a motion? So moved. I need second. a second. Thank you. Will the secretary please take a roll call for the adoption of the matter? I most certainly will. Commissioner Edwards? Commissioner Edwards? Hi, sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> oh, no, no worries. Commissioner Halfen? Hi. Commissioner Netsky? Hi. Commissioner Munoz? Hi. Vice President King? Aye. President Lavelle? Aye. Ayes have it. Motion carried and the matter is adopted. Thank you. Under acknowledging excellence, there is nothing to report today. Under presentations from the de departments, there is also nothing to report today. Under communications and reports from the general counsel, an update to the amendment of chapter seven of the code of the Chicago Park District. We will hear from Tim King, our general counsel. Good morning, Commissioners, President Lavelle, Superintendent Kelly. Um, an amendment to the code regarding naming procedures was considered at the August board meeting, as you'll recall. In the amendment, a provision was added to address the renaming of parks and park features that had previously been named. Specifically, what we did was uh, bifurcated the process and separated into a two part process that will be followed that will, will be as follows. The first part removes the existing name and the second separate part grants a new name to the park or park feature. So we'll, we'll actually see the new process in effect today in upcoming letters. The intent of the provision was to allow for the consideration of name changes in the limited instances where current circumstances or sensibilities may warrant such consideration. The board approved the measure <clears throat> commencing the 45 day period for comment, which is consistent with phase one of a code change. And the specific chapter we're amending is 7C2 and 3. However, it came to light at the same board meeting and actually uh, Commissioner Munoz brought this to our attention when we were considering the Catalpa Park letter that the language in the proposed amendment was not specific regarding whether a, the two part approach was always necessary. For example, a park such as Catalpa was in fact a previously named park, but named for a tree. There are a large number of parks that have been officially named, but for trees, animals, even this on the street on which the park is physically located. In such cases, changing the name of one of these parks should not require the same level of close scrutiny that removing a name honoring a historic person or event warrants. And you'll actually see that the current process, the existing part process, which regard to inanimate objects, actually works uh, fine as Heather Gleason will uh, speak to in our next level. So therefore, while the proposed amendment period is open for comment, we have added the, the following language. I'll just read it. Uh, and it just specifically cites that when a park or park feature is named for a historic person or event, that then triggers the bifurcated two part process uh, that President Lavelle and others had asked for. So uh, with that, I'm that concludes that presentation regarding the amendment. We're just talking about the specifically specific amendment to the code regarding the uh, code change and a two-step two process. Okay, thank you. Are there questions um, by commissioners or is the need for further clarification on anyone's part? All right, thank you general counsel. Next from the Director of Planning and Construction, an update on phase one 45 day notice to name park 568 as West Ridge Nature Preserve Park. 
We'll hear from Heather Gleason, Director of Planning and Construction. Good morning, Heather. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners. Um, as the president mentioned, we wanted to provide the board an update. Um, so we initiated a 45 day notice period to name Park 568 Westridge Nature Preserve Park at our August board meeting. Since then, it has come to light that there is a state act called the Illinois Natural Areas Preservation Act that actually allows the state, um, gives the authority to the state to name nature preserves. So this particular park has not gone through that naming process. Um, so we are considering options since we're still on the 45 day comment period. People are um, providing recommendations on what it should be named, but we wanted to update you that we will likely not be using the, the term nature preserve as a result of this state commission that has the authority to name nature preserves. Um, and with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Ed, was there consideration to just calling it nature park? Thank you, Commissioner. Yes, that's one of the things that we are considering is just dropping the name preserve. Um, and so, you know, we're still taking in comments from the public on this matter, um, but that is certainly something that, that we're considering. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Additional questions or concerns? All right, thank you. Thank you. Next is the people in the park section. Will the secretary please call the name of those who have signed up to speak? I certainly will. We ask that you please limit your comments to two minutes. We also ask that those making comments before the board, please lower your electronic devices, including television, so that we may hear you clearly and do not experience frequency interference. Our speakers who have signed up to speak are Principal Dale Harris, Kurt Kelly, and Renaya Thomas. Those are our first three speakers. We'll get our first speaker on the line. Hello. Hello, is this Principal Harris? This is Bianca Jones, but yes, she will be speaking first. Yes, okay. Got you. Y'all say where you are. I'm going to walk over to y'all with the phones next, okay? Okay, thank you so much, Principal. Uh, uh, Bianca, just let me know when she's there. Hi, this is Principal Harris. Hi. Hi, Principal Harris. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing well. You are live with the Chicago Park District Board meeting. You may make your comments. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so good afternoon. My name is Dio Harris and I'm the principal of Village Leadership Academy. It is an honor to be addressing the, the Chicago Park District Board of Commissioners today for this historic event, the official renaming of Stephen Douglas Park to Anna and Frederick Douglas Park. VLA is a K through eighth grade social justice school, an education institution that centers student voice, agency, civic engagement, and activism through our grassroots campaign curriculum. As we consider the parks renaming to include Anna Mary Douglas, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the named and unnamed black women responsible for VLA in this campaign itself. Village Leadership Academy is co-founded by two black women, Anita Andrews Hutchinson and Nikisha Hobbs. The Change the Name campaign has been led alongside our determined students by Bianca Jones and Jennifer Pagan for the last three consecutive years. And although you can't see me today, I'm wearing a Rakia Boyd t-shirt in tribute to her life and the origins of this campaign. It has been inspiring to witness the campaign's evolution and community-wide support. As a principal, I often think about the purpose of education. In 1963, James Baldwin wrote a talk to teachers and many of his words still resonate with us today. He wrote that the paradox of education is precisely that as one begins to become conscious, one begins to examine the society in which they are being educated, that the obligation of anyone who thinks of themselves as responsible is to examine that society and to try to change it and to fight against it, no matter the risk. That this is the only hope society has and the only way it changes. So it is my hope that the students of Village Leadership Academy and all of the youth organizers and activists across the city of Chicago continue to take risks question our systems, reimagine, and rightfully demand that we do better as a society to ultimately inspire righteous and radical change. So thank you for your consideration today. Thank you. Thank you. And now we'll hear from uh, Kirk Kelly. Wait, before, before we move on, uh, if I could just thank the principal for her wisdom and put an exclamation point behind uh, James Baldwin's words. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. 
Mr. Kelly, whenever you are ready. Okay, hi, uh, my name is Kirk Kelly and um, fifth grade me who came to the board was very excited to be involved in democracy and navigating the endless sea of bureau bureaucratic red tape. I thought I was ready for all the pressure of making a big change in the world, but to be honest, I wasn't. I wasn't ready for the challenges to come. I wasn't ready to fully critically think about the situation and confrontations that, that were and had not happened yet. I could not do it if it wasn't for us. If it wasn't for Ms. Jones guiding hand behind us, if it wasn't for my class, our collective mindset and ideals. If it wasn't for those who continued the work once we moved on, I couldn't have done it. I know no one else could have done it either without the creative motif teeth of the artist, the ideas of our collective intellect and the hard work of the community to do our part in standing up to the injustice of Rakia's death. It took us and it's going to take a lot more after us to get rid of the worship to memory of the one S Douglas to stop the world from glorifying the immorality of history. Remind them to remember past mistakes, not honor them. Remind them that you exist. Remind them of their painful past. Remind them of the people that woke up every day just to simply beat us to death. Remind them that there are more of us to come. And never forget who we do this for. Rakia Boyd, Trayvon Martin, Brianna Taylor, Stefan Clark, Eric Garner, Philando Castile, Henry Box Brown, Robert Smalls, Harriet Jacobs, Harriet Tubman, Betty Bookman, for the black peoples of Gen Alpha, Gen Beta, for the black peoples of baby boomers and millennials and millennials, Gen X, for the black people of the depression, and especially to the ones who can't be named, for the grave above them is nothing but a rock. But I don't want anyone to forget the most important people this is for, us. Next we have um, Ms. Thank Renaya you. Thomas. Hello. Hi, Renaya, you Hello. are live. You may begin your comments now. My name is Renaya. I am one of the organizers for the Change the Name campaign. We didn't really know what our plans were for the campaign after COVID hit, but it has been an, but it has been an eventful summer. I began and ended the summer with canvassing. I started the summer talking to the Board of Commissioners about how we wanted to also name the park after Anna Douglas. I've spoken with journalists about the timeline of this campaign. I was also a part of the relaunch of the campaign and I presented in front of hundreds of people who supported the campaign. My summer ended with me going, going canvassing with fellow classmates. We walked countless blocks in, North Lawndale, in the North Lawndale community, passing out flyers and forming the community that we didn't. This campaign has taught me that you have to reach outside of your comfort zone to make a difference. When this campaign started, I wasn't comfortable speaking in front of large groups of people. Now, now I am willing to speak in front of large crowds, even though I still get butterflies. I also learned that my community is supportive because once I told my community members about the Change the Name campaign, I felt as if they had my back. We're getting Douglas Park changed to be named after Frederick and Anna Douglas. Thank you. Thank you. Our next three speakers are Jasmine Johnson, Sahir Mbengu, please, make, please correct me if I'm incorrect with the um, pronunciation, and Jennifer Pagan. We'll start with Jasmine first. Jasmine, are you there? Yes. You may begin your my comments. Name, my name is Jasmine. I'm an organizer for Change the Name campaign, and I'm here today to remind you why it's important to include Anna Douglas in this historic name change. The park should be named after her because she was loving, caring, fearless, passionate, dutiful, and action-oriented. And it had the brilliant plan to give Frederick a sailor outfit so he could be his journey to the north. She was a freedom fighter and an abolitionist. Anna also assisted with being a helper on the Underground Railroad by making her home a stop. Without the help of Anna, Frederick may have still been enslaved and wouldn't have achieved the accomplishments he is known for today. Thank you. Thank you. Zahir, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Hello, my name is Zaire Bang. I am an eighth grader at Village Leadership Academy. I have been working on this campaign to change the name for several years. This grassroots campaign holds the title of one of the longest grassroots campaign Village Leadership Academy has ever had. 
I feel one main reason this campaign is important is because it is led by none other than Chicago youth who are fighting against racial injustice. This campaign makes a historic precedent for years to come. As Frederick always said, without a struggle, there is no progress. I thought the progress took a little while to surface and expect it because we were children, but the struggle was more than authentic. And I am glad we are here to discuss the progress that we as a people made. Join us Saturday, September 12th, to 4 to 7 p.m. to celebrate the campaign in Douglas Park. For years, we have pulled this moment closer and it's finally here. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next we have Ms. Jennifer Pagan. Ms. Pagan? Yes, and then yes, and then speaking after me is uh, Bianca Jones as well. Yes, yes, I'll call her um, on the last four speakers. Okay, amazing. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Jennifer Pagan. It has been a great honor and privilege to work alongside youth organizers to change the name of Douglas Park. When I joined the campaign in 2018, I was awe inspired by the work students had already done and the work they were willing to commit themselves to in order to win this righteous fight. Over the past four years, these young people have put in hours and hours of work that include the study of grassroots organizing strategy and framework, attendance at multiple board meetings, over 40 hours of canvassing in the North Lawndale community, 10,000 petition signatures, presentations at schools and organizational meetings, countless meetings with community allies and supporters, the planning and execution of multiple train takeovers, and the teaching at Douglas Park Field House on their day off of school. The youth organizers of this campaign did everything they were quote unquote supposed to do. They tried to participate in the political process and were instead disregarded by adults and politicians as well-spoken kids who were doing a cute project. Time and time again, students were promised action and support by older people like Michael Scott Jr but were instead met with bureaucracy and an inherently anti-democratic decision-making process. It wasn't the proposals, 10,000 plus petition signatures, or attendance at board meetings that pushed the board to call an emergency meeting in July. It was sustained grassroots organizing, direct action, and civil disobedience in response to police violence that pressured this board of unelected officials to finally center this fight. Let us not forget that it was the power of the people that got this name changed. This name change will not be positioned as a political victory for inactive politicians or uninvolved adults. This is a symbolic victory in the fight to end white supremacy, and it should not be disguised as progress in a city that prioritizes profit over people. All power to the people. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Our last four speakers are Bianca Jones, Louise McCurry, Juanita Irizarry, and Sheila McNary. Ms. Jones, are you ready? I am ready. All right, you may begin my your comments is, now. My name is Bianca Jones, lead educator and organizer who began this campaign over three years ago. We want to extend many thanks to allies and organizations that have supported us over the years, like the North Lawndale Community Coordinating Council, the West Side Branch of the NAACP, Chicago Vote, the Let Us Breathe Collective, Lifted Voices, Chicago Freedom School, the Beauty Blake Break Collective, historian Guy Mount, Alderman Rosana Rodriguez, and every person who left a public comment to support our efforts. We appreciate you. Most importantly, it is my honor and privilege to name the Village Leadership Academy students whose hard work secured this victory. Justin Beecham, Kirk Kelly, Omar Lane Jr., Brooklyn Pittman, Robert Jamison, Mike Matthew Davis, Anthony Rivera, Cameo Rocket, Zion Taylor, Preston Broom, Zari Young, Eric Werner, Brooks Lansana, Braden Jackson, Shyla Lockhart, Aaron Peterson, Renaya Thomas, Melissa Rivera, Juan Martinez, Michael Brewer, Imani Kyle, Jamila Hobbs, Aubrey Child, Gorgeous Dawson, Morgan Boston, Caleb Hill, Zahir Bang, David DeLacy, Jonathan Diaz, Michaela Allen, Zandria Pope Johnson, Maya Ligon, Mia Ligon, Enrique Hernandez, Rain Williams, Jaheem Goodall, Jasmine Johnson, Perez King Jr., Camille Boyd, Deshaun Spann, Tiana Williams. May this historic victory empower you to continue to fight injustice in all forms. You've only just begun. We did it. Thank you. Uh, let me say to the uh, the entire group from the Village Leadership Academy that we as a board um, are impressed by what you have been able to accomplish. We are uh, 
am impressed by your determination and your refusal to take no for an answer. It took a while for this to happen, uh, but it is happening and it is happening as a result of your grit and your determination. So you are to be commended. The credit goes to you for uh, being actually ahead of the curve uh, by a long way, by a long way. So uh, congratulations to you in this effort. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We will now get our next speaker on the line. We're calling Ms. Louise Curry. Hello. Hi, Louise. How are you? I'm here. All right, you are live with the Chicago Park District Board meeting. We can hear you loud and clear. You may now begin your comments. Thank you so much. So today I want to take my time to celebrate what's making a positive difference in the park. Um, we here in Jackson Park work as a team. We are blessed with having really positive leadership and Bobby Beckham as our supervisor and Farrah as our area director. We want to celebrate the people who've made a difference. Uh, our fallen hero, Dwight Powell, who recently died, who's a long-term JPAC board member, who spent his life working for our children in the park. First in the community as a community organizer and school psychologist, and in JPAC with initiatives that brought school supplies to kids who couldn't afford it, brought camp scholarships to kids who couldn't come to camp, summer jobs for kids who had no money, and education classes in boating and golfing and swimming. We celebrate the life of Dr. Dwight Powell at our JPAC meeting coming up this Monday. Second, I want to celebrate the Chicago Parks Foundation who brought the innovative program Pitch In for the Parks in the parks this summer and brought hundreds of volunteers in to clean up the park during a time when everyone felt hopeless. During the time of COVID, volunteers were out in the park cleaning up and making their parks a great place for families. Third, I want to celebrate uh, park security. We are really, really lucky to have Chief Tom Snooks, who's been out, Southside Chief Tom Snooks, who's been out there whenever there's a problem to help solve problems, to intervene directly, and to team up with Third District whenever there's a problem of overcrowding or criminal activity. I got to say, park security must be able to write parking tickets. I know that was rescinded years ago. We need to rethink that because writing parking tickets makes all the difference. Finally, I want to celebrate all the people in the parks who can't be named here, but who've made it possible to bring hope to Jackson Park during a time when COVID has totally overwhelmed us. I know there's a lot we could talk about that could make a difference, but this has been a Jackson Park has survived and flourished because people feel like there's hope because they've had a part of the process. Thanks so much for your help. It's been a great, great COVID season. We've survived thanks to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. We will now get our next speaker on the line. Uh, Ms. Juanita Irizarry. Hello. Hello, Ms. Irizarry. Hello. And yes, I'm here. All right. Now you're live with the Chicago Park District Board meeting. You may begin your comments now. Thank you. Uh, I just want to take um, a, a very brief moment to um, just thank the young people today and their teachers and principal who have spoken because they have really said all there is to say and um, just feel very lucky to have been present um, to see them uh, kick off this campaign and to work through and beyond very difficult processes. And we are just so thankful at Sons of the Parks for their leadership um, in bringing this uh, name change to fruition today. Um, I think this is a great opportunity to learn from this process and the power of the people as has been referenced. Um, and that's especially important um, as we also are looking at the changes of processes. One of the things that has been experienced in this process has been the difficulty that happens sometimes in public access to these meetings um, or notice about these meetings. And just during this process over the summer, 
the uh, Village Leadership Academy team noted that they themselves didn't know that um, issues that they had been working so hard on were going to come up on the agenda um, and weren't able to participate effectively. And then for today's meeting, um, the deadline to um, sign up to speak took place yesterday on, um, or on, on Monday on a holiday. Um, so now that the park name change processes have been looked at, Friends of the Parks would invite the Board of Commissioners to think about revisiting the people in the parks processes and all processes related um, to allowing people to speak at these meetings. Um, in signing up myself, thankfully I have a job where I see my emails um, all day and night. Um, but if not for that, some people may be excluded from meetings with a notification going out at 4 p.m. on Friday um, for the chance to speak at this meeting with a deadline on a holiday. So having been part of the process with the Park District years ago in creating the People in the Parks process, Friends of the Parks officially asked Supportive Commissioner to revisit how um, we do public participation in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we will now get our last speaker on the line, um, Ms. Sheila McNary. Hello. Hello, Ms. McNary, how are you? Fine, how are you? Good. You are live with Chicago Park District Board meeting. You may make your comments now. Thank you. President LaBelle and honorable members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to testify in favor of renaming Stephen Douglas Park to Anna and Frederick Douglas Park. My name is Sheila McNary and I am an executive member of the North Lundell Community Coordinating Council. I am here in support of changing Stephen Douglas Park to Anna and Frederick Douglas Park. Today marks the 45th day after community comments to initiate changing the park to Frederick Douglas Park. The students of Village Leadership Academy have petitioned you to add Frederick Douglas's first wife name, Anna, to the name. It was Anna's example of an abolitionist, a free black woman, and a financial supporter that inspired Frederick Douglass to become the statesman that we know. History has not been kind to Anna, and I am so very proud of the children for doing their research, and North Lundell Community Coordinating Council totally support them in adding her name. It is time to right the wrongs of history, and reclaim our public space. By renaming the park after Anna and Frederick Douglass, we recognize those who have made positive change in the country. We also recommit ourselves to racial and social justice by reclaiming our commitment to social equity. The North Lundell Community Coordinating Council is a group of North Lundell stakeholders, including community-based organizations business owners, elected officials, and individuals that have come together to guide comprehensive planning and implementation in North Lundale. In closing, thank you for naming our park in honor of Anna and President Douglas. Thank you. And thank you to all of our speakers. Your comments have been received and Park District staff will be reaching out to you as needed to address your concerns. We'll now proceed with the remaining agenda items for today. Under unfinished business, there is nothing to present. Under new business from the Chief Financial Officer and the Treasurer, an ordinance authorizing the issuance of general obligation unlimited tax bonds, Harbor Facilities Revenue Alternative Revenue Source in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $130 million of Series 2020F in one or more series. We'll hear from Steve Lux. Good afternoon, President Lavelle, Board of Commissioners, and Superintendent and CEO Kelly. For the record, my name is Steve Lux, and I'm the Chief Financial Officer of the Chicago Park District. I'm here before you today with respect to an ordinance to issue harbor bonds for both new money and refunding opportunities. 
As you may recall, before August board meeting, there was a bond issuance notification act hearing where we notified the public that the park district would be issuing bonds for new money in the future. We have now provided you with the relevant documentation for the bond transaction consisting of not to exceed $4 million for series F1 for harbor improvements and $126 million for refunding series F2, which will refund all maturities after January 1st, 2021 of the harbor bond series 2010 C. The refunding will have the same final maturity as the 2010 C bonds, which is January 1st, 2040, and is estimated to have approximately $19 million in savings or about 16% of the refunded bonds as rates across the municipal yield curve are very low. In fact, rates have been higher basically 99% of the time over the last 20 years as compared to now. To date, our bonds outstanding is approximately 847 million. Based on anticipated market conditions, we expect after the transaction, our outstanding balance would be approximately 844 million with over $28 million of principal payable on January 1st, 2021. In the board letter, you will be able to see the financial and legal teams for this transaction. The total MBE WE percentage of the underwriters team is estimated at 39% with an additional 7% to a service veterans firm and over 50% MBE WV for the legal team. Lastly, as part of the debt issuance process, we have met with the rating agencies that rate our debt and I will provide you with those results um, of those meetings in the near future. Are there any questions? Hearing none, can we have a motion? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Will the secretary please take a roll call on the matter? I certainly will. Commissioner Edwards? Aye. Commissioner Halpin? Aye. Commissioner Netsky? Aye. Commissioner Munoz? Aye. Vice President King? Vice President King, um, you might need to turn your uh, mic back on. Okay, we'll move on. President Lavelle? Aye. Two, three, four. Yep. Ayes have it. Motion carried and the matter is adopted. Thank you. From the Chief Financial Officer and the Treasurer, adoption of the 2020 Tax Levy Ordinance. Mr. Lux? Uh, once again, for the record, my name is Steve Lux. I'm the Chief Financial Officer of the Park District. I'm here before you today to request approval of the 2020 tax levy ordinance in the amount of $294.3 million. This request is made annually as required by state statute and is administrative in nature as the board has already approved the 2020 tax levy as part of the 2020 annual appropriation ordinance back in December of 2019. The ordinance before you today approximates the 2020 budget. Once approved, the ordinance will then be filed with the Cook and DuPage County Clerk's offices. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions, may we have a roll call matter, a roll call on this matter also, please. Yes. Commissioner Edwards? Aye. Commissioner Halfen? Aye. Commissioner Netsky? Aye. Commissioner Munoz? Aye. Vice President King? Maybe get you back. Okay. President Lavelle? Aye. Ayes have it. Motion carried and the matter is adopted. Thank you. Thank you. From the wellness authorization to enter into a contract with Fitness Solution LLC for fitness equip equipment purchase, maintenance and repairs, specification 19009. Ms. Boyle. Good afternoon, President Laval, Commissioners, and Superintendent Kelly. My name is Megan O'Boyle, and I am the Wellness Manager with the Chicago Park District. Today, the Wellness Department is seeking the authorization to enter a contract with Direct Fitness Solutions. Under this contract, the Chicago Park District is looking to purchase new equipment for our fitness centers, have preventative maintenance and repairs done on existing equipment in our 70 fitness centers citywide. The contractor was selected using the request for proposal process. Direct Fitness Solutions is located in Wonderline, Illinois, and has been in business since 1998. The contract is set initially for a two-year term with the option of three one-year extensions. The contract amount for the initial term is 
$415. Okay. The Chicago Park the Chicago Park District owns 1,100 pieces of fitness equipment and they are housed in our 70 fitness centers. There's a variety of fitness equipment to meet the needs of the park patrons. Direct Fitness Solutions is an authorized dealer and distributor of many brands of fitness equipment, maintaining the standards of the Chicago Park District Fitness Centers. They will supply commercial grade equipment and when delivering equipment, they will train our staff on how to properly clean and use the equipment. And at a minimum, Direct Fitness Solutions, along with the Wellness Department team, will train CPD staff twice a year. Preventative maintenance program will be developed to ensure all equipment is working for optimal levels. And the last component of the contract is if there is growth or redesign of fitness centers in the Chicago Park District, Direct Fitness Solutions will provide consultation services regarding scale drawings, layouts, equipment options, and utility requirements requirements. I'd like to thank you today for your time. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. A second? Second. Thank you. If there's no objection, we'll apply the last favorable roll call vote from the prior matter to this matter. Um, I, I think um, we can take a roll call now that uh, Commissioner King is back, if that's okay with you, President Laval. Okay, we can do that. Commissioner Edwards? Aye. Commissioner Helfen? Aye. Commissioner Netsky? Aye. Commissioner Munoz? Aye. Vice President King? Aye. President Laval? Aye. Motion carried and the matter is adopted. Thank you. Before we move on to the next couple items, I'd like to say a few words regarding the naming process and a new initiative. On August 12, 2020, Mayor Lori Lightfoot announced the formation of a committee to assess the memorials, monuments, and other art across the city of Chicago in an effort to grapple with the history associated with various municipal art collections, including the Chicago Park District's extensive collection. The Chicago Park District Board acknowledges the important objectives of this newly formed group, and we will work in concert with the committee as it moves forward. The Chicago Park District has procedures for naming parks and park features and for placing monuments in parks. While the board will continue to follow the Chicago Park District code while making such determinations, it will gladly consider the recommendations of the mayor's new committees as those recommendations come forward. Now from planning and construction, a request to remove the name of Stephen Douglas Park from park number 218. We'll hear from Heather Gleason. Good afternoon, President Lavelle, General Superintendent Kelly, and members of the board. Again, Heather Gleason, Director of Planning and Development. It is recommended that an order be entered authorizing the General Superintendent or his designee to officially remove the name of Stephen A. Douglas from Park 218, also known as Douglas Park. If we could have the next slide, please. This city map shows where Douglas Park is in the broader city context. It is located at 1401 South Sacramento Avenue. Next slide, please. And this is an area of the park. It's a little more than 165 acres located in the North Lawndale community area. Next slide, please. So this is an image of Stephen Douglas and the proposal is to remove his name from this park. As we mentioned at the July board meeting, Stephen Douglas believed that the people should decide with respect to whether new states entering the union would be free states or slave states. Douglas's wife inherited a slave plantation from her father from which Douglas also profited. At the July board meeting, we initiated a 45 day public comment period to consider removing the name of Stephen Douglas from the park. The 45 day comment period has officially passed with more requests from the community, local schools and elected officials in favor of removing Stephen Douglas from the park. We have received 138 comments, 136 in favor and two against. Again, this proposed action will officially remove Stephen Douglas from the park name and return it temporarily to Park 218. And with that, I'm happy to take your questions. Are there questions or concerns? The may I have a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. Will the secretary please take a roll call for the adoption of this matter? I certainly will, Commissioner Edwards. Aye. Commissioner Helfen. Aye. Commissioner Munoz. Aye. Vice President King. Aye. 
President Laval. You forgot Commissioner Netsky. I am so sorry, Commissioner <laughs> Netsky. <laughs> 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 Commissioner Netsky. This is impossible. This is here a picture of Frederick Douglass on your left and Anna Murray Douglass on your right. Frederick Douglass was born in 1818 into slavery on the eastern shore of Maryland. Douglass taught himself to read and write and later met a free black woman named Anna Murray. She had born, been born free to parents who were former slaves. Ms. Murray worked as a laundress and housekeeper gaining independent financial security for herself. Her freedom provided Frederick with the courage to believe that his own dreams of freedom could become a reality. She provided funds to Frederick, which he used to disguise himself as a sailor and escape slavery. Ms. Murray shortly followed Frederick to New York, where they were married and established a household. Frederick Douglass worked with several abolitionist groups in the United States and abroad. He also published several books and published in many anti-slavery publications of the day. Douglass traveled across the Midwest and Northern states making speeches and is known as one of the great orators of his time. He focused on the abolishment of slavery, the promotion, the promoting of moral and intellectual improvement of African Americans and women's rights. And Douglas also held several high offices during his lifetime. He served as the Mark Douglas died on August 4th, 1882, and Frederick Douglass died on February 20th, 1895. Frederick Douglass remained a central figure for the fight for equality for African Americans and for women for his entire life. As a reminder, this proposed action today would open the 45-day comment period for the public to comment on the renaming of Park 218 to Frederick and Anna Murray Douglas Park. Thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions. No, let me, I want to interject um, the naming let me be clear, the naming on the table is Anna and Frederick Douglas Park. Anna and Frederick Douglas Park. That was the name the school specifically asked for. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Superintendent uh, Kelly. I, I actually have a question. I'm not sure if this is appropriate at this point or if there's anything we can do about it right now. Has there been um discussion around actually naming just naming the park Anna Murray Douglas Park as opposed to Anna Murray and Frederick Douglas Park none that I've heard okay I ask that question because um as Heather mentioned um Anna Murray Douglas was Frederick Douglass's first wife. He had a second wife after uh, she died. And so I'm not, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm just not sure if it, it is, uh, I'm about to say appropriate, but that's the wrong word. But given the fact that they were not married, he was subsequently married, or should we be putting the two of them together in this way and honoring and naming the park after both of them, as opposed to honoring uh, Anna, who probably doesn't have anything named after her um, because she's one of these individuals who's been incredibly important historically to this country, but has been overshadowed by her husband, Frederick Douglass, in many ways. Uh, so I, I don't want us to, I'm not necessarily putting another proposal out here. I'm just really asking process wise, if in fact that's come up and if in fact there's anything we should do or do we just let the 45 day period pass and see if we get public comment in that way and then, you know, make some decisions. There hasn't been anyone who said to us that it should be named specifically for Anna and not for Frederick. In fact, it, initially it was uh, the proposal to rename it for Frederick Douglass. And then during the course of this three year or plus, three year plus effort, it became uh, more of an idea to name it for both of them. I think that what we should do is allow this 45 day comment period to go forward. And if there is, the public will tell us what the sentiment is. You know, what, what we have heard to this point is that they want it named for both of them. But if there is a uh, overwhelming desire for it to be named for Anna alone, I think the public comments will reflect that. Got it, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there additional concern or are there additional questions? Then I will entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Thank you. Will the secretary please take a roll call for the adoption of the matter? I most certainly will. Commissioner Edwards. 
Aye. Commissioner Halfen? Aye. Commissioner Netsky? Aye. Commissioner Munoz? Aye. Vice President King? Aye. President Lavelle? Aye. Motion carried and the matter is adopted. Thank you so much. From planning and construction, a request to officially name Park 572 as Bloomingdale Trail Park. Thank you again, Heather Gleason, Director of Planning and Construction for the Chicago Park District. It is recommended that an order be entered authorizing the general superintendent or his designee to officially rename Park 572 to Bloomingdale Trail Park. We could have the next slide. So this image shows you where Bloomingdale Trail is located. It is a two mile trail in the Logan Square community area. The community has long wanted to rename the top of the trail from Park 572 to the Bloomingdale Trail. The Bloomingdale name comes from actually the street name, uh, which became the reference to the old rail line used to create the park. If we could go to the next slide. So this one shows uh, the original framework plan um, and it shows the full 606 system as a series of at grade parks with the Bloomingdale Trail as the trail connecting all of them. Many people believe that the trail is already named the 606, but it actually isn't. The 606 moniker really refers to the entire system, which includes many of these parks at grade that you see on the map um, that are already named, while the Bloomingdale Trail is really referring to the trail on the top that connects them. We have had many, many letters of support in favor of this proposal since we opened the naming period um, in February of this year. Uh, ben Helpen of the uh, Neighborspace, he's the executive director of Neighborspace and also represents Friends of Bloomingdale Trail, was not able to join us today, but wanted to make sure that he shared um, his group's desire to rename the trail and to remind everyone that we have numerous support letters from all of the packs along the trail as well in favor of this naming. And with that, I'll take any of your questions. Questions or comments? Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Second. If there are no objections, we will apply the last favorable roll call from the prior matter to this matter. Any objections? Motion carried and the matter is adopted. Thank you. That concludes today's board meeting. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. The motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you for your participation. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye. you.